Can I practice singing in the car? Hey gang, Ken Tamplin from Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. Well, the answer is yes, and let me explain some caveats to this that are very important. The first thing is, is that um, a lot of people just don't have any place to practice and or their time is very limited, but they might have a commute to work or school or whatever that is. And so the only time they have is to practice in the car. Now I'm gonna confess something to you guys. I think I've confessed this before, but not much. Um, for four years, I was in a band where my commuting time was about an hour and 10 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes each way, okay? And I also, at that time, was a TV uh, VCR salesman. So I talked all day long, which was like, Ugh. and then you get, you know, you'll go, go sing for three or four hours at night in practice that night and then practice in the car on the way. So I had to learn a lot of uh, very interesting ways of maintaining good vocal health and stamina, not going hoarse, not drying out. So, um, but I am gonna confess, I did practice a lot in the car. It wasn't the only time I practiced on the weekends and other times that I had time or during the day when I could go into work late or whatever, uh, I would practice standing up. But let me explain this as we go. First, as, we, as you know, sitting down, a lot of people, if you're in a choir, they say, sit straight up so you can get your diaphragm and your chest expanded. And that's absolutely true. However, when we're sitting, we have a group of muscles, we've talked a lot, about transverse abdominus muscles that runs through the core of your, your stomach and through the back. Of course, your diaphragm in the top, you have a secondary diaphragm that's down at the pelvic floor that actually may, plays a major component in this and, and other muscle structures that, that are, are really critical and paramount to good, strong support. So we lose about 30% of our support when we're sitting, especially in the high notes. Now, you won't notice it as much maybe in lower ranges, but when you really have to go up high consistently and you have to have that relaxation response, and your, your chest and your ribcage needs to be expanded and there's a tendency to, to, to lean over and whatnot or you're driving, you're, you know, your arms and shoulders are in this kind of position, it makes it more difficult. Can you do it? Yes, but this is what you have to watch out for. You have to watch out for the, the abdomen tensing up, you have to watch out for the rib cage collapsing and, and having little or no air in the lung before you start to take the breath. You wanna have rib cage expansion so that the lung is about half to three quarters full. You don't wanna have your lurching over like this. If you can have your eyes crazy, but have, <laughs> driver's ed 101, wait, Ken, <laughs> stop. But have your hand kind of at the bottom of the steering wheel so your arms aren't up like this lurching forward. So you can keep your shoulders more in a back position to pull the steering wheel as far back as you can. Now, now, as you're going through your scales, I'm assuming you're practicing to Ken Temple Vocal Academy in your car or whatever it is. Um, there's a distraction element, okay? So it's easy to get distracted by cars and traffic and this and that, lights, and, you know, all these different elements. Um, so you really want to like be first conscious of the road. Okay, that's the very first thing. And who cares if people see you in the car? Laugh all the way to the bank or to the karaoke bar that you're having a good time at. But, but it's really important though, remember, that if you can't focus 100% on the singing, things suffer. Things suffer like the extra concentration on the diaphragm or why am I choking in the same spot or you know these other elements. So my suggestion to you in that uh, instance is that to practice kind of easier things that are not, uh, don't aren't as demanding, physically demanding, and wait until you get to a place where you can stand up and you can have all the, the attention that is uh, necessary in order to be able to get to the harder places of singing and the things that you're having more trouble with. So don't write those off going, I can never do this, you know, as I'm in the car singing, I can never do this because I can't seem to get it. Do it standing up and you'll see a huge difference in that. Then the other, the last thing is, is over singing. There's a lot of noise, a lot of distraction and whatnot. They may have the volume too loud in the car from a playback of a scales or something you're doing. Turn them down kind of low and sing above them and have plenty of volume to where you're not over singing. So you're not literally over singing and going hoarse or training bad habits to sing too loudly when it's unnecessary because you want to be able to pace yourself as you sing. So can you sing in the car? Yes. Those are the caveats and the things I would start out with first of things that I had to deal with as I did train in the car for a lot of years, um, but I also had to watch out for what I trained, how I trained, and left the big stuff to the actual standing up and the total concentration aspect of singing. All right, I have a singing course that covers all of this stuff. If you guys are interested, kentamplinvocalacademy.com where I have 25,000 singers over there in a singing forum all talking about this and you can get my course there if you're interested. All right, gang, hopefully this was helpful. Until next time, peace out.